Okay, before we start this video, I do want to address just a couple things uh, right before we get into the topic, and that is, number one, I totally understand that this is going to be a little bit more of an advanced, um, complex topic, so if you're new to the game, if you're new to understanding how PvP works, then please just try and stick with me. I will try to answer it in the simplest terms and explain it in the simplest way possible, so just stick with me for a little bit. Um, and the second thing is that I actually confirmed all this information with Blizzard because I know that this is like a hairy system. It's brand new to the game and it's a little bit complex. So again, um, this this information is correct. But uh, again, I'm trying to gonna I'm gonna explain this in the best way that I can. So <laughs> let's get into it, guys. I want to explain how the gearing system works in PvP for Legion because I know that it's an odd situation where. And every expansion before this, like gear is very relevant. Like getting your gladiator gear, getting your perps uh, was a lot to do, okay? And this increased your power level by quite a lot. Like if I draw the parallel back to Mr. Pandaria, if we look at Mr. Pandaria, if you had a full set of purple gladiator gear, epic gladiator gear, right? And then the new season came out, okay? So that first set of gladiator gear compared to the new set of gladiator gear was absolutely like just huge difference like i think you're i think the number is actually you increase your stats by like 25 percent every season and that's insane like that's a huge amount of damage and health and all healing like all that stuff is very very like inflated okay now in this expansion how this works is that every single character has a set character template of stats okay so when you enter instance PvP zones, not, okay, real quick before we get into that, but instance PvP zones is where you have these stats, but in the world PvP and the world quests and the duels and all that stuff, if you enter PvP combat, you do not get that stat template. But in instance PvP zones, so like rated battlegrounds, uh, battlegrounds in general, uh, rated arenas, skirmishes, all that stuff, you get this like, you are set to a normalized stat template for your class which is determined by the developers okay so now that we got that out of the way um how this stat templating works is again it's it's set by the developers like your set level of stamina or intellect or agility or strength or crit or mastery all that stuff is set um already before you get into arena but if you zone into arena and you just hit level 110 and you have say a seven 40 item level we're gonna say that because item level is very relevant in this game now so item level is again when you open your character info you can see it right here your item level mine's 853 right now okay so item level is very relevant especially in pvp because it increases your power and i'll get into that in a moment but with that um when you enter into pvp zone you are set to like eight it's like this really weird number system where you have the set amount of stats, but it's somewhere around 850 item level, and then you go up from there. So I wanna explain the going up from there part. Now, if you have an 800 item level, um, you are at your base level stats. So if you have anywhere at 800 item level and below, you are at that base minimum stat template that your class has available to them, okay? Now, this is good for PvP, and a lot of people seem to think that that's very controversial because you know you can't earn the perps and you can't go smash some noobs in Battlegrounds as easily as you could before. Now, I totally understand that. Like, as a professional noob stomper, I get it. But the thing is, is that when I have a, say, you know, two or three patches down the line, um, I have a 980 item level. We'll just throw that number out there. If I have this, like, I have the best mythic gear, I've got the best, you know, gear for the current tier, two or three patches in advance, and people are just hitting 110, and they still have that 740 item level, 750 item level, and I go in there and I just stomp them, like, that, that is unfair to them, and it dissuades people from playing PvP. But at the same time, if a pro player, if, like, the one of the best world champions or tournament players, whatever, makes a new character, gets in there, and I have that mythic gear, and I just stomp that best player in the world, I just destroy them because I have gear, that's also unfair. So it's unfair from a different, you know, two different perspectives, and I think that everybody having this normalized stat template brings it up... Um, so that you can thrive even if you don't have the best perps in the game. And with rated PvP and stuff like that, that is okay. That is a good thing. Because at this point, uh, when you have all that stat template stuff, like, you're, you're good to go. Like, 
you can just jump in and pvp at any point in time you don't need to worry about the gear but at the same time your your stats and your class can be actually like understood of how they're doing because in previous expansions there was really like this huge problem of not being able to know like how they could tune classes but also um, not being able to actually tune classes with nerfs and buffs and bring the power levels down if something's very strong um, but now that can actually happen so ex for example like people always complain about frost mages uh, frost mages are op they always have been you know the best classes in the world whatever um so for example if if a frost mage is like if frost mages in general are dominating pvp um they can actually just nerf frost mages like if you're the if you're the frost spec they can actually just take that template down and be like you know what let's take down the intellect you know let's just take down that intellect about 10 percent for frost mages and that just takes away the damage straight up and in, in previous expansions that could not happen because it would directly affect raiders and pet battlers and you know all these people out there that would play the game um you can't just nerf frost mage by 10 percent in pve because that would directly affect something that is not like the purpose of that nerf like if you nerf mages for uh, pvp and it directly affects raiding then that just sucks because everybody loses for a system that didn't really you know wasn't really intended to affect raiders at that point but now that can happen so again you can nerf classes very specifically and, I, and precisely, and I think that that is beneficial for the game as well. Now, a lot of people out there, their controversial point is that like, you know, I don't have to earn gear. Like, what do I get if I earn all these perps, whatever? Uh, like if I get all these epics and like, how do I still stomp noobs? And while you're not able to stomp noobs as much, the thing is, is that you can still gain power level. It's still worth getting gear. Now how this works, and this is important, so listen up is that if you have an 800 item level, like I said or earlier, um, you are at that base minimum stat line, right? That is, that is you're at the base stat template. But if you get, say, an 810 item level, we're gonna use that for example. If you get to 810 item level, you have 1% more of those stats available to you. So your template goes up by 1%. So all those stats go up by 1%, okay? Now, this has a cap. So again, if I had 900 item level, then I have 10% more stats available to me in PvP combat, in instance PvP combat. So again, if you go up by one item level, you go up 0.1% of those stats, that stat template that you have available to you. If you have 100 item levels, uh, like if you have 100 item levels over 800, so if you're at 900 item level, then you have 10% more stats available to you on that stat template. And that's how it works, guys. So again, gear doesn't matter that much, but you're also still rewarded for having that gear. It's just not that you can go in there and one shot some kid because they don't have any gear like that. That is purely unfair and takes it away from the competitiveness. It really is. And I'm super happy that this uh, system is in place. However, before I go, I do want to offer a little bit of feedback for the developers in case they do watch this. And that is, I do feel that the developers should slow down with these nerfs and buffs. I think that buffing and nerfing things by anywhere between 15 and 50%, like for example, Fireball was nerfed by like 50% in PvP. Um, like I think that those huge nerfs and buffs need to be taken down and be a lot slower. So for example, if you go by week by week basis and reduce Fireball by 5% and then 5% again if it's too strong and then 5% again if it's too strong and I can just continue that until you get to that sweet spot, then that seems to, in my opinion, be a lot more engaging and fun and understandable from the community side. Because the thing is, is that there, like with League of Legends, for example, that's another game that's pretty competitive. Like you can just change champions. Like you don't need, you, you know, you can just log in and you can play Vayne. Or if if Vayne gets nerfed, you can just play Lucian, right? And that's how that's how it works. But with World of Warcraft, like you build a character, you level it up to one ten. And then after that, you spend weeks and weeks and weeks to get that artifact power up to maximize the amount of damage that that class can do. And then you get your honor level up and that's another two or three weeks. And that's a really long amount of time to level up a character just for it to get nerfed by 50% and be useless in PVP compared to say Frost or I don't know, like another class that comes up to power by just like by default, right? And I think that overall, I do think that I would like to see the nerfs and the buffs slow down uh, percentage wise but overall i really like the system 
And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you did learn something from this, you can also leave a comment down below on your discussion, subscribe to my YouTube channel for future videos. And if, for those who did not know, I actually did just release my very first Legion PVP full guide on my website um, for Fire Mage. And I think that since you guys really enjoyed the Warlords of Draenor versions of guides that I did, and that was like wildly successful, people were really happy with those. I decided to continue that with Legion and I am doing the Fire Mage one first and I will be releasing these guides on my website, www.cartoons.tv over time. And I'm gonna be doing every single class. So be sure to check that out. And I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to give a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. When I close my eyes,